very intense. Now we'll hear from Jason Jacobson, who's going to tell us about raising equity for your business. Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me okay? I want to first thank Elliot, Blanca, and the SBAC for inviting me here to participate in this forum this morning. As Terry mentioned, my name is Jason Jacobson with Aegis Professional Services. Our firm helps entrepreneurs raise capital through our legal consulting and capital sourcing divisions. We put the deal together through our legal team. We put all the offering documents together that investors need to uh, see before they invest in a deal, then we put together business plans, financials, investor marketing material, and then we take it out to our network of investors to help them raise capital. Let me get this started. I've spent the bulk of my career working with entrepreneurs here in the Chicagoland area in a number of capacities as a resource, an advisor, consultant, capital raiser, and I've built a lot of relationships and other resources in the community to help entrepreneurs. And I spend most of my time now helping them raise money. How many entrepreneurs in the room here have raised, have raised money from investors before? Okay. What, what my goal today is I'm gonna go over some of the things you need to think about before you raise money from an investor so you have that perspective and give you an example, an investor presentation example, so you see what uh, is put together. And I put these pitches together for my clients, and this is for them to speak in front of investors so they can highlight the key components of their business that an investor would like to see before they make any decision. And how many in the room here would like to raise capital from an investor? Okay, some more of you. So hopefully this will be educational for those of you that do not know this process. Again, this is gonna be high level and I can answer more questions later. Sorry if the coloring's not good. This is a, what I'm gonna talk about. Do we need financing? I'm gonna talk about some of the things you need to think about before you decide you should raise capital from investors. And go over some of the equity financing players, who's out there that provides equity. Also, some of the investor criteria, things that investors look for before they invest in a business. Also, some of the deal breakers, some of the things that will go against your favor uh, as they're reviewing your business. And then I'm going to go over a presentation uh, to give you an idea of what one of these looks like. Has anyone seen a presentation before, an investor presentation? So some of the things you need to think about is for financing is the stage of your business. What stage am I in? Am I pre-revenue? Am I an early stage business? It really depends on what stage you're in and, and where you want to grow, and that determines how much capital you want to raise. And I'll go into some more detail on the different types of funders, but it really depends where you are in your business, and there's different funding levels for every stage of the business. And if do you want to grow big, do you want to grow beyond a lifestyle business? Do you want to grow real big where you can hire employees, expand across markets, scale your business? That's a big factor. A dry cleaner or a, a store down the street is not going to raise capital from investors. But it really depends how quickly you want to grow and where you want to go. It's not for everyone, but it is something you have to think about. Also, do you need capital to build product? To, to provide more services. A lot of times businesses need outside capital to scale the business uh, versus organically growing. They need capital to grow quickly. And that goes along with hiring management team. Many early stage businesses do not have the capital to bring on the right team to help them grow, so they have to raise money to bring people on board. That includes hiring the right sales people, uh, additional management team members that have expertise in the industry. This all will help you to raise capital as well. If you can do many of these things before, that will help even more. Sales and marketing, capital can also help you scale your business uh, much quicker than if you try to do it organically. And exit. Many entrepreneurs think about exiting a business before they even start it. Uh, so if you want to exit a business in say five to seven years, a lot of times you need capital to grow. 
And if you have some existing investors in your business, they also want to see an exit. So you may need additional rounds of capital to get to that level. So in terms of thinking about equity financing, uh, can you attract investors? Now that's You have to have a lot of the right pieces in place to get to uh, get investors to be interested in your business. So a lot of times you need to talk with outside people to help you think that through. Um, we help companies think that through as well. And we'd be happy with the terms and conditions. Many investors will take a piece of your, well they will all take a piece of your business. Depends how much you give up. Uh, as you have more rounds of equity for investors, you eventually will be giving up a controlling interest to your business. But in the early stages, you usually don't have to do that, but it depends on the value of your business. So again, the more positive things you have moving forward in your business, the less equity you have to give up. But these are things you have to consider. If you, with debt financing, you don't give up control, but you have obligations to pay back your debt. On equity financing, the investors are waiting for a return three to five years, sometimes longer. So that's really what you have to consider. But they also could kick you out. They can kick you out of your company if things are not moving in the right direction. And are you willing to share some of the fine, the profits of the business? Sometimes you have to give dividends to the investors uh, to appease them and to make sure they get a return on their money. Some of the different sources of equity. The first one is your, uh, your own funding, your savings. Many entrepreneurs, and pretty much all of them, start with their own funding. You have to have some of your own skin in the game for an investor to take to want to put money into your deal as well. Friends and family is the next stage. Typically, it's some of the hardest money to get, but it's a logical place to go. And if things are not going well, your Thanksgiving and other meals are very difficult. <laughs> but this is one of the most logical sources to find capital. After that is high net worth individuals or angel investors. These are people that you get introduced to. You may know them not as well as friends and family, but you get introduced to them. And that's where, where my firm comes in and, and that's what we help people find that capital. Those types of investors really are all across the board. There's accredited investor um, status by the SEC. It's 200,000 or 250 um, annual income. It, individually 300 household or a million dollars net asset um, which does not include your home it has to be net worth and um, and those accredited investors there are a lot of those out there but you have to find them and they could be seasoned executives of businesses could be entrepreneurs that have cashed out and made some money could be it's it's a lot of the traders in this community there's a lot of traders here that can invest in businesses but I spend a lot of my time building the relationships to find those people for my clients. And people don't advertise their investors, so it, it takes time to find them. There are a lot of angel investment groups here in town where people collectively come together and look at deals and pull their money together. But most deals get done outside of those groups, so you just have to find those people. The next stage would be venture capital, which is institutional money. The, the difference between angel investing and venture capital is angels invest their own money, venture capitalists invest other people's money, which comes from corporations, pension funds, other various other sources, but they are investing other people's money. And it also comes with a, a bigger price. You usually have to give up more control of your business, and it's also a much harder place to get money. Most businesses never get money through venture capitalists. And if you don't have to take the money, don't take it. But it's very difficult money to get. The next stage after that would be private equity. These are firms that usually will buy your firm and take you out. But it's you have to have a significant amount of revenue for this to happen. Um, again, a lot of firms don't go this route unless they're willing to sell the business. Also, IPO, obviously we know about that. That's not very viable these days. More likely uh, exit or cash event for an entrepreneur is an acquisition. Again, that's more on the, the end of the business, but that is possible and there's also strategic partnerships, joint ventures, things like that that can bring additional sources of capital. Some of the criteria that investors look at, and I also created a sheet um, that I think was handed out Block, as you hand it out, that has more details about this, but some of the things investors look for. 
stage of development, you have to fit their development stage for whether early stage, seed stage, later stage, whatever it is, you need to be in their stage of development for them to invest in your business. So it's a matching process. You have to get in front of the right investors for the right uh, stage of your business. The management team is very important for a business. They want to see that you have industry experience, that you've had a possibly a, a, an exit opportunity at some point, so they feel comfortable that you have been able to take a business to exit so that they are comfortable that they will get their money back. The management team is probably the most important thing an investor looks at. So the bigger you can, the, gr the greater and more comprehensive you can build your team before you raise money from an investor is, is crucial, but it doesn't always happen. A lot of times you need capital to, to do that. That's where an advisory board comes in. If you can get good advisors that can fill in some of the gaps of your management team, that's an important thing to consider. Does your business solve a problem? Is there a need in the marketplace? What are you solving? Now, that's very important. If, if, it's, if it's nothing that's that unique, it's probably not gonna get an investor. And the market size you're going after, is it large enough that there's room for you to play in this market where there's enough dollars free to capture it. Investors typically like to see that you're going after a billion dollar plus market and then they want to know what's what piece of that market you're going to capture so they want so there's enough out there for you to capture it and have a significant business. And your go-to-market strategy, they want to see how are you going to scale the business, how are you going to get revenues. This is very important for the future of the business obviously and for the ultimate exit of the business. Your com competitive differentiators, how are you different than your competition? Are there barriers to entry with what you're doing? And they really need to, you really need to understand that well. If you don't understand competition, that is definitely a problem when an investor evaluates your business. Do you have a proprietary product or service? If you can patent anything or any have any IP protection that helps, it's not always defensible all the time, but you can get around those things, but that shows that you've taken a serious consideration to protect your business, and it's important if you can do that. Your revenue model, that's obviously important. Investors like to invest in businesses that have recurring revenue models so they can predict your revenue. So the more predictability, the better. The revenue projections that you give an investor never come to fruition. They know You're never gonna get it exactly, but if you can predict uh, your revenue uh, through a current revenue model that